13, let's start in verse 2. Amen? You're ready? Say, I'm ready for the word. I'm ready for the word. Acts 17 and 2. Let's go. Let's go. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Verse 3. Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, Jesus is Christ. He must needs have suffered. Tell somebody else, he must, you know, Brother James, he must needs have suffered. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. Lord, hallelujah. Oh, we're thankful of this day. We're thankful. Hallelujah. Your mercies. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new, Lord. Every time we wake up, it's because of you. Because of your divine order. Lord, we thank you for this word. Deliver souls to the altar. Once again, deliver understanding and the baptism of your word first. And repentance. Lord, we pray for the three souls that went down in Jesus' name that couldn't make it today. We pray for others traveling and, and, and Lord, touch them where, wherever they are. So when they get back to the house of the God, they bring a, a, a mighty spirit. They bring a, a, more souls with them. Lord, touch their lives. That the young ladies that went down in Jesus' name. Lord, make them new creatures every day. Give us all a repentant heart from this word. And let us see something new. Hallelujah. And in a greater way where we can all say, wow, you're magnificent. In the name of Jesus, we declare that this word, hallelujah, will baptize us and save us this morning. And will give us the strength we need. Hallelujah. That you can perform a good work in us. Give us the strength we need to make it another day, Lord. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Amen. And amen. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? God is so good. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. He's so good. He's so awesome. He's so kind. There's nobody like him. Can you even imagine a life without Jesus? Can you even imagine a time without him? Some of us have lived our lives without him at some time or another. And if you were to be honest to yourself, it was so lonely. It was so destitute of, of spirit. Just so, oh, turmoil. I just, just so empty. Hallelujah. But I thank God. And sometimes we take for granted. We want to come to church. We want to turn on the TV. We want to hear somebody preach or sing old school, new school, Christian rock gospel. But we want something to lift us up. And we just take for granted that it's going to be there when we need it. And sometimes we forget we go trying to find, where's that old Walter Hawkins song? Where's, where's that Chris Tomlin song? Where, where, where is that, that preacher that might lift me up and talk about grace? Uh, like T.D. Jakes. And, and where is that preacher that can talk about the cross like Billy Graham? And that, but, but we forget that we just have the opportunity to reach out to God just because he has given us his mercy just another day. So we're searching. This life is a searching life. Searching for our orders, searching for our purpose, searching for something. Sometimes God just wants to throw up our hands and say, thank you, Lord. I really don't have to search like I think I do because I got you, Lord. I need a little help explaining and somebody prays. Don't you know it helps somebody praising God with you and talking about the word with you? Amen. But all you really need is Jesus, and he'll direct you to somebody. I'm not saying you don't need somebody, 
Amen. If you don't have a prayer partner, or if you don't have someone where you can just talk about the word with, amen. A lot of saints call me up and I call them, and we talk about the word. Amen. I don't mind doing that, but we need to connect to each other. Find you a word discussion partner. Amen. Find you somebody you can open the Bible, even if you don't know what it means. So let's just go to Thessalonica today. <laughs> let's just go to Philippi today and find out what God has for me. We have to be in search with each other. It's going to be each other that lifts each other up. So I love how Paul and Silas, after they got out of jail, they was praying. We skipped over most of it, but we talked about it. We talk about it all the time. They was praying, and they was praising God in jail. And in the next chapter, we'll go back a little bit. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll get there. But in the next chapter, chapter 17, Paul is in, he passed through Amphilippus, Apollonia. He got to Thessalonica. There was a synagogue, a church of Jews. Paul, as his manner, went in unto them. He was there three Sabbath days, and he reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Three Sabbath days. Saturday is the Sabbath. It's not Sunday, but it's Saturday. Someone said, I didn't realize that. Well, yes, it's Saturday. God created the heavens and the earth. It took them seven days. We don't know. There's a debate whether those are literal seven days or seven days as God's time. Because you know, a day to God is a thousand. Uh, to us, it's a thousand. To God, is a thousand days. It's one day to us. Amen. But the Sabbath day, they count a lot of things on Saturday. Three Saturday, he reasoned with them out of the scriptures. And he said part of his reasoning, part of him making sense to people in the synagogues, believers that believed in the Mosaic law, Believers that believed in Jesus and understood, I'm, I'm sorry, they believed in God and they understood the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He reasoned with them and he told them Christ had to suffer. He had to suffer. Now, when I was in Sunday school and when I heard my father preach and he said Christ had to suffer and other preachers said he had to do it that way. My little old logical mind trying to make sense of it was saying, well, did he really have to? Could he have done it another way? He's almighty God. Couldn't he just snap his finger and save us all? Couldn't he just snap his finger like Thanos in the Marvel movie and comic books and got rid of the bad and kept the good or however he did it? Couldn't God Call 10,000 angels to get them off the cross. But Paul reasoned, part of his reason, reasoning skills and making sense, the biggest part of it was telling the people that he had to suffer. Jesus had to suffer. This is a very interesting thing. Very intriguing. Why? That should be our next question, right? Why would he have to suffer? The song said, to save a wretch like me. That song is true. It makes sense. He had to suffer. Why? Why? It was necessary for him to suffer. The scripture said he's opening and alleging that Christ must needs he had to. It was necessary for him to. 
He must needs. The Bible talks like that. Must needs. That's the emphasis on what he had to do. Must needs. There was no debate. There was no other way. Jesus decided to do it that way. So he had to do it that way. The prophecy said, wounded, bruised for our transgressions and iniquities. By his stripes, we are healed. They reasoned. The apostles reasoned. They spoke of the scriptures. How did they reason from the scriptures when they was creating with Jesus the New Testament? What scriptures was they using? They was using the prophecy. The same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Job. And the same God, hallelujah, of Adam and Eve. The same God must needs to suffer because the prophecy said this was the way he chose. So the why doesn't matter a whole lot. But part of the why is because we are so needy. We're needy people, aren't we? We're needy people. Uh, the songwriter did a great job by saying, I need the oh, I need. Not I just want, but I must need. I need the old. We're needy people. We need him so much that we'll do drugs without him. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry to come down your lane if you have been there or if you're still there. But if you're not there anymore, say, hallelujah, I'm not there anymore. Uh, we're so needy that we'll do alcohol. We'll drink and turn our liver into a stone. Make it rock hard. The more you drink, the more your liver hardens up and it can't process all the sugars. The more you tear your kidneys up. Johnny James, one of our favorite teachers, I know it is Bishop Clifton Jones. He said if your kidneys could talk, it would probably ask for... I think he said maybe the beer instead of the soda. Either way, your kidneys can't handle all that sugar. Amen? And some people drink a fifth. They get, just getting started at a half a fifth a day. We're needy. We're so needy that we'll, we'll cry. We'll talk about how people treated us. We'll quit without Jesus, won't we? People are quitting today at a higher rate than never before. We're needy, but he must needs, hallelujah, to suffer. Mm, it's imperative that he suffer. This is how he reasoned with the scribes, the theologians. This is how he reasoned with them. He said, he had to die for you and I. Must needs. And he said he must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead. And that Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. He had to be risen from the dead for you to believe. He had to be risen from the dead for him to show his power to snatch all the power back. He had to be risen from the dead to show that he is the Messiah. He had to be risen from the dead, so I have something to preach about. So we have something to have brotherhood meetings about. He had to be risen from the dead so that we can sing the songs of Zion, praises to the king, for he is the king of kings and give him glory. He had to be risen and suffer be risen from the dead so Paul could reason with the people. When Paul reasoned with the people, the scriptures were still being written, but he was written, he was reasoning from the Old Testament. Reasoning about who Jesus is. Don't put the extra plate out at the table, Jewish people. Jesus has already come. This is the Messiah. I have to let you know that you don't have to look for another, John said, John the Baptist, is that he that should come or should not look for another. He said, this is me. This is your savior. Savior. He must needs. I can stop preaching right there. Because we have to understand.
understand that. And we have to have that in our soul, in our spirit, in our memory. He had to die. He had to die. He must needs because the devil wants to keep us. He must needs because the devil wants to sift us. He wants to have us and to sift us as wheat. He has to. He had to suffer. Opening and alleging that Christ, hallelujah, that he had, he had to be risen from the dead. My God had to die. Peter said, not you, Lord. You don't have to die. I rebuke that. He said, no, you don't have to wash my feet. He said, no, you, you, you don't have. I'm not going to deny you. But he told him he wasn't going to die. Mm. Had to reason with them. I'm reasoning with you this morning. I'm preaching to you, and I'm reasoning with you. Because we have to preach Christ. When you preach Christ, you preach a resurrected soul, a spirit that's eternal. When you preach Christ, you preach victory over death. Amen. Praise the Lord, Bishop. You taught me when you preach Christ. Hallelujah. You preach an eternal salvation. You cannot preach Christ without preaching great triumph and victory. Hallelujah. That's why you can sing the song. Maybe Paul and Cyrus were singing, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord find my battles. Praise, worship, victory shall be mine. You cannot preach Christ without preaching the author and finisher of your faith. You cannot preach Christ without preaching a saving God. Hallelujah. Once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind like Paul was, but now I see. Reasoned with them out of the scripture. To reason means to logismos. Logismos, a reasoning, a thought. Thinking, a concept. Logismos in Greek. A thought. He has given them some, some truths. Truths that could not be debunked. Truths that could not be defeated. New concepts about how to worship the same God they've been worshiping. And new ways because they have to put Jesus in the way. Reason means to talk with someone in a sensible way in order to try to change that person's thoughts or behavior. The world tries to tell us that we force our opinions and views on them. Amen. We got to prove God. But it is most important that we reason. Amen. Reason with them. They think we're not uh, people of logic. They think Christians do not know and practicality. They're not prudent people. But we know how to reason because we got the main reason for every season, don't we? We got the main, main topic for every discussion. The reasoning. You have to talk in a sensible way uh, to order to change a person's thoughts or behavior. The theologians needed, in the synagogue, they needed a change. They needed a change. Most of us have been through that change. But we need to be touched up sometimes, don't we? Most of us have gone through that, but we need repentance. The reasoning skills of the Spirit of God. Paul, hallelujah. You know, they brought handkerchiefs Blessed handkerchief, and people were saved from his handkerchief. And devils came out when he laid hands on the people. The reasoning skills of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Even when he came to Ephesus in Acts 18 and 19, he left them there, but he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Reason with them. So the reasoning is the Bible class. The reasoning is the spiritual word partner. And I got to call, I'm looking across the, the room, I got to call you all up more often and say, what do you know about that word of God? What do you know about that word made flesh and dwelled among us? And we beheld the glory, the glory as of the only fought, fought, begotten son of God. In the beginning, in John 1 says, was the word. And the word was with God. 
And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. John was doing some reasoning, wasn't he? John was doing some writing, some proving. He was doing some talking. The same was in the beginning with God. In him was the light. Light was the light of man. Light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from John, God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light, that all men that might believe on him might be saved. I'm messing that up a little bit. But John wasn't the light, the Bible says. This is reasoning. John the Baptist wasn't the light. In verse, in chapter 18 of Acts, they baptized, uh, what's his name, Apollos, was still baptizing in John's doctrine. He had to be reasoned with. Amen. I'm getting ahead of myself, but this is, we can't just stay in the same place. He had to be reasoned with. And the scriptures had to be explained to him. You know when the scriptures was explained to Apollos that he reasoned and preached the word and explained the word of God more heavily, more mightily, because you must be born in his name. You must be saved in his name. You must be baptized with his spirit. Amen. You become more anointed when your reasoning, hallelujah, has fully matured. Now, John 4 and 1 says, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more of disciples than John, through Jesus baptized himself, not but his disciples, he left Judea, he departed again into Galilee, and he was getting ready to meet somebody in Samaria at a well. Samaritan woman. And it said, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Jesus answered and said, Unto her, whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the whole water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a, a well springing up in an everlasting life. Jesus had some must needs. It was necessary. He had to go. Don't you know when the Spirit of God is in you? Your needs are a must. Your move, your directions are a must. Hallelujah. Remember today that he died and he had to die. And we need to be reasoned with. Now, if we reason with on a regular basis, by reading the scriptures, by, or by having a scripture partner, maybe we wouldn't drink that. Amen? Maybe we wouldn't say that if we remember that Jesus must needs die for our infirmities and our sicknesses and our wicked soul. I must needs. Maybe we won't talk to her like that. I must needs understand. I got to be reasoned with. My soul is wicked, but the spirit of God in me could help me that I don't have to sin. I must needs because my body is a temple of him. I must needs live, hallelujah, with him and live after him. If we must needs, maybe we won't take that that we're not supposed to take. Maybe we won't lust on that, hallelujah. Maybe our priorities would be better if we remember, if we remember that he had to die, hallelujah. He had to give his life for you and I. And we need to be reasoned with. We gotta be reasoned with because we're walking and we're lost. Sometimes saved folk are lost. Let me leave that right there. Saved folks are lost because we've been saved so long that we forget that we must need. Hallelujah, go to Samaria. We must need reason with somebody. We must need open our Bible in the morning and at night so that the word is fresh in me. I must need so I'll make it back here on Sunday morning. And I'm a blessing to the body of Christ. You can't be a blessing if you don't keep making it back to be blessed and to give a blessing. I must need. I have to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I like the scripture that said, as for me and my house, we 
will serve the Lord. 